What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? After a cross country meet, my team's bus finally made it back to school pretty late at night. Not quite midnight, but pretty close. As a team we all celebrated our victory together very briefly before heading out with our respective families. However, I was one of the only athletes on that trip who had their own car. So I made the long walk down to the student parking lot with another runner that I promised to drop off on my way home. We were talking about the meet, how she finally hit her PR, and how she appreciated me driving her home this late up till we got to my car and loaded our school stuff in the trunk. I went ahead and cranked up my car while she finished, put her stuff away, when the passenger side door is thrown open and she jumps in screaming. Drive bra monster. Given her hysteria, I didn't ask why, and I just slammed on the pedal, and we sped out of the parking lot. While we were exiting the parking lot, I saw a flash of what looked like two glowing red eyes like the headlights were reflecting a wild animal's eyes, and what I assumed to be teeth reflecting light similarly to the eyes only white. Naturally, this sent me into what was essentially a pseudo panic state. My heart was beating so hard I though it would crush my lungs, everything was a blur, and it was like my limbs were on autopilot. I couldn't feel my hands gripping the steering wheel, but there is still a section on it that is missing the fake leather because of how hard I was gripping it or something. Luckily it seems that my body wouldn't allow my passenger to be hurt by my panic. We managed to drive a good ways away and turn onto the highway that runs close by our school and then turned off at an open gas station to recover. As it turns out, my trunk was still open and we lost most of our school supplies in the mad dash out of the school. My friend almost wouldn't talk to me, she was trembling so bad, but I managed to get her side of the account out of her. Apparently she saw something in the football field the parking lot was adjacent to At first she thought it was a large buck grazing on the grass, but when I cranked up my car, it stood up and turned to face us. Standing up, her best description she could think of was, if Slenderman had deer antlers and was more muscle bound. After we were both recovered enough, I drove her home and agreed to go back to school that afternoon, since it was a weekend, to make sure there was actually something there. I couldn't sleep barely any that night. I hoarded a variety of weapons close to my bed and set up Pornhub to calm myself down and distract my mind. When the next morning came around, the girl and I waited until it was well into the day before I went to pick her up. With a newfound courage that came with the sunlight and the somewhat illegal possession of 20 gauge shotgun on school property, we arrived at the parking lot to find all of our stuff torn to shreds like a pack of animals were looking for food. We've never had any problems with people disappearing in my area either before or since that day and no one else had seen anything else like that. So both of us decided to write it off as a trick of tired minds and some wild animals. We still occasionally contact each other when we have to go out in the dark for some moral support and as far as I know we both carry at least a pocket knife. I thought I had a dream of riding my bike in Las Vegas when I was 5 or 6. In the dream an old man walked up to me cut my arm and knocked me off my bike and I woke up at home. I had stitches on my arm and my parents later told me I was riding my bike and crashed but deep down I'm 100% sure that that man really had cut me and thrown off my bike. I wasn't sure till I was 13 to 14 when my neighbor asked me if I remembered the time when he found me bleeding next to my bike. Out of curiosity I asked him if he remembered if anyone was around and he said there was an elderly man walking away from me about 20 yards ahead. To this day I'm still scared of what would have happened if my neighbor hadn't seen me in the front. My uncle, when he was in his teens, witnessed a UFO event. He was at the beach in the middle of the day when he saw an oval shaped object about half a kilometer up in the sky. He said that everyone, there were over a hundred other people at the beach, and they all witnessed this, could see that the object was huge big enough that, if it had come down, it rolled flat in the entire beach. Everyone watched it for about half an hour, and during that time it didn't move one bit. Heaps of people were just standing or sitting around, watching it. 
my uncle said, and this is an almost direct quote, you know how you sometimes feel like you just have to get out of a place, like you have to take off running? Well this was different. You felt the opposite, like you had to stay. After half an hour, the object started moving very slowly, and then it just shot sideways extremely fast and disappeared. No plane or human made flying object cold moved in that way, or looked like that, unless the government was slash is developing technologies we know nothing of, a strong possibility. I lived alone with my dogs in a brownstone in a gated community in uptown Dallas. I worked a few miles away, but came home every day for lunch, to let my dogs out. After living there for about a year I started smelling men's cologne really strong in my entryway, and up my stairs. I figured it was my neighbor next door, and didn't think anything of it. Then one day I found a dollar bill folded lengthwise on top of my purse. I never carry cash, nor have I ever folded a dollar bill lengthwise. Thought it was weird. A few weeks later I came home, and both my dogs were standing in front of my bedroom door wagging their tails, and staring at the door. I figured they wanted to lay on my bed, but I was in a hurry, and walked them real fast, and went back to work. When I came home, that day there were 20 or so dollar bills folded lengthwise and placed neatly around various surfaces in my room. Never in my life have I been so terrified. I grabbed my dogs and noped the fuck out of that place as fast as I could. I called the cops, they came out, my locks were changed, but I could never be there alone again. I moved a month or so later. When I moved, I found dollar bills taped to the back of pictures on my walls, under furniture, and random places. I never figured out who or why or even how. I think the scariest thing of all is knowing that day, when I was home, whoever had been going into my house was waiting quietly in my room, folding dollar bills, and my little dogs knew it. This was probably a story on the news, but my dad's co-workers came across materials, to make a bomb in someone's luggage at the airport he works at. It turns out there was a suicidal lit student that wasn't planning on hurting anyone. He just wanted to assemble the bomb when he got to his destination and then try to kill himself. I heard that he's doing better now, but it's still pretty scary. I was walking in the woods once when I saw a blue tent or what had once been a tent. It was torn to shreds and the poles were snapped, and it was all in a messy pile in the middle of a clearing. From a distance, it had looked like this clearing was full of cream colored flowers, but as I got closer I realized they were pieces of paper. Pages from Stephen King's The Shining, to be precise. They were charred around the outside, as though someone had set light to them, and the fact that they were individual made it look like someone had really wanted to destroy the book. I shrugged it off. It was a very neat setup for whatever project the film students from the nearby school would be making, I told myself. Very well done, guys, very creepy. It made the news shortly afterwards that a man from the next town over who had been missing for a long time had finally turned up, dead, in his blue tent in the woods. I don't know if he was still in there when I walked past, I don't want to know. I lived with my deadbeat mom for a little bit in an apartment, paid for by somebody else. We had no furniture, and slept on the floor for the most part. I once woke up to a group of strangers wandering around our apartment in the middle of the night. They broke in, while we were sleeping, looked around, took nothing of the little we had, and left. I never told my mom. Honestly, looking back on it, they were probably people that my mom was involved with at one point or another mayo. I was probably 11 or 12. There was a telephone pole in our backyard that stood in the middle of our back fence. An electrician was working on it and needed access to our backyard for a couple days. One of the nights, my best friend was over for a sleepover and we were in the fort we made in my room. I was facing toward her, away from my bedroom door, and she gets startled and let's put kind of a half-footed scream slash yelp. She said she thought for a split second she saw a man's face peering between the sheets through the entrance to our fort. We both felt really creeped out the rest of the night, but just fell asleep eventually. The next day or so my family realized that two of our motor scooters we kept in the back were missing, and sometime later my dad recognized the electrician on Sacramento's top 10 wanted. 
I'm pretty sure that night was the night he stole the scooters and he must have come inside the house through the back door and left or something when he realized we were awake. In 4th grade, my friend brought a picture to school with her to share among our group of friends. We passed it around talking about it. It was just a picture of her family, so we thought nothing of it. After school, me and her were hanging out by a tree and talking about the picture. She pointed at something that everyone in our group has brushed over. It was a very clear and visible face looking over her shoulder. And I can't joke about this, it was a serious face in an otherwise normal family photo. When I asked who that was, she said she didn't know, and there had been no one behind her when they took the picture. Sometimes I think about it, and it's quite freaky. Had a girl over for a date. We woke up the next morning, and heard a young girl laughing hysterically in my living room. There was no one in that fucking living room, but we both heard it. The story of James Kloss is terrifying. In rural Wisconsin last year, a 13, 14 ish year old girl went missing after her parents were murdered in their home. Police arrived within 4 minutes or so, but she is just gone. Of course, speculation is that she was kidnapped, or that she was in on it, or dead, or whatever. Nobody knows because she has completely vanished. 88 days later, in the dead of a northern Wisconsin winter, she runs out into the street to a woman walking her dog. She had been held captive about 40 minutes from her home. All of that is scary enough, but here's the terrifying part. She had never had any contact with the guy that murdered her family and abducted her. One day he was driving to a new job, at which he only lasted a day, and saw her get on the school bus. At that moment he decided that he was going to take her. There was no warning. No grooming. There was absolutely nothing that she or her family could have done to avoid everything. A creepy young man saw her from 100 foot away and decided that he would murder her family and take her for himself. When I was about 13 I was an adventure explorer one Abe. I used to pack a tent and survival gear to go camping up the hill about 4 miles from my house, elevated 1200 feet. I set up my tent in this small field almost entirely surrounded by woods. I made my beans, went to sleep. I was woken up at 3am to the sound of what I thought was a wild animal approaching the tent, not unusual. Woke up at sunrise, opened the tent, and found a parcel wrapped in white aged cloth, tied in strawstring with a note on top welcome friend. Inside the parcel, get this, a calf leg slash oof. Never told a soul about it to this day scared the soul out of me, never went camping again, and didn't stop thinking about it for months. Thanks for watching, and share your stories. Don't forget to consider the idea, to maybe think about potentially subscribing. Peace.